Therefore, it is time for members' statements. The member for Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, today I rise and have the honour to recognize the 1,050th anniversary of the baptism of Poland. The introduction of Christianity in its Western form with the baptism of Prince Mieszko the first in 966 was one of the most pivotal moments in Polish history. This event has profound consequences and determined the future destiny of the country and its people. It marks the symbolic founding of the first Polish state and lays the major foundations of Polish identity and culture. It is also the traditional starting point of Poland's recorded history. Mieszko's acceptance of Roman Christianity through his marriage to Dobrawa, a Czech princess, has shaped the course of Polish history and identity up to this day, 1,050 years later. As a result, literacy, law, education, early use of the Polish language, institutions of higher learning, music and architecture developed within the Christian framework. Ontario is home to half a million Canadians of Polish heritage. We are very proud of the contribution Polish Canadians have made to our province since first settling here more than 155 years ago. Speaker, on behalf of our leader Patrick Brown and the entire Ontario PC Caucus, I'd like to extend my warmest wishes to all the Poles celebrating the 1,050th anniversary of the baptism of Poland today. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further members, the member from Bramley, Brampton, Bramley or Malta. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, May is Tamil Genocide Remembrance Month, and while it's absolutely important to remember the tragedies, including the human rights violations, the war crimes, and in fact the genocide that the Tamil community has endured, it's also important to note that these adversities are ongoing and the Tamil community continues to face oppression at the hands of the Sri Lankan government. Uh, despite these adversities, the Tamil community has shown such tremendous resilience. In fact, they continue to thrive in the diaspora. In addition, they've shown inspirational commitment to celebrating their arts, music, cultural, and in fact, their language. And it's something that inspires us all. On a personal note, as a Sikh, our community has also endured uh, genocide. And it's for that reason I also stand in solidarity with the Tamil community. In addition, Andrew Horvath and all New Democrats stand in solidarity with the Tamil community in remembering the past injustices and the ongoing oppression. And in fact, we also stand in solidarity with the ongoing struggle for a permanent solution based on peace, freedom, and justice for the Tamil people in their nation of Tamil Elam. In addition, uh, on May 9th, 3 p.m., the NDP will be hosting a, memor a mem memorial event to remember the genocide and all those who lost their lives. It'll be held at 3 p.m. in the NDP caucus boardroom. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Brampton West. Thank you very much, Speaker. It's uh, an honor to rise in this House to recognize May as South Asian Heritage Month. As the General Conference of UNESCO rightly asserted, cultural diversity is as necessary for humankind as biodiversity is for nature. In December 2001, the Government of Ontario passed the South Asian Heritage Act, proclaiming the month of May as South Asian Heritage Month and May 5th as South Asian Arrival Day. This is a time to acknowledge, reflect on, and celebrate the rich history of South Asians in Ontario. As many of you know, Ontario has a large South Asian population made up of immigrants from the descendants of India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Nepal, and many other countries. South Asians have been settling in Ontario since the beginning of the 20th century. We don't have to look far to get a sense of the experience that members of the South Asian community had while settling in Ontario. Mr. Speaker, my family came to Canada in the 1960s. It, it wasn't easy. It was hard, just like it would be to settle in any other place, uh, especially a new country. But we were fortunate enough to be rewarded for our hard work. And it's my, it's my, I feel it's my responsibility and my family's responsibility to do the same for the people that will be following us in the future. As I know, this is an experience that many Ontarians can relate to. As a member of Ontario South Asian community, I'm proud to say that the South Asian community has, proved, has provided another layer of colour, tradition and heritage to the multicultural fabric of Ontario. Mr. Speaker, I just want to finish uh, that I know firsthand that the values of South Asians are the values of Ontarians, and my caucus continues to stand Thank you. firmly with the South Asian community of Ontario. Thank you very much. Thank you. Member Statements, the member from Oshawa, with the Oshawa. 
Thank you, Speaker. I'd like to outline what we're doing in Durham Region with our innovation and technology sector. Uh, the Spark Centre in particular uh, inspires entrepreneurs to start and grow successful innovative companies and since arriving in Whitby Oshawa Speaker in 2010, Spark has helped more than 700 local companies get off the ground. Spark works to improve Durham Region's competitiveness and visibility as a world-class innovation cluster. It elevates and supports key industry sectors including health, manufacturing, digital media and high-tech among many others. Helping feed this increasing demand for jobs in these sectors are the University of Ontario Institute of Technology, Trent University and Durham College Speaker. And they're perfectly positioned to encourage the growth of the innovation and technology sector in Durham Region. But Speaker, the business growth cannot continue without matching support for our universities and colleges. Properly funding higher education and in particular bridging the skills gap will create the path to jobs and that's what this province so des desperately needs. We have uh, such a great and growing opportunity in Durham Region, Speaker, and we want to ensure that particularly the University of Ontario Institute of Technology, Trent University and Durham College are properly positioned to feed the need in this innovation and technology sector. And thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Hamilton East, Stony Creek. Thanks, Speaker. Speaker, Hydro One crews recently cleared cut the trees and sprayed herbicide all along Hamilton's beautiful beach trail. Instead of working with the city to protect both the trail and the transmission wires, Hydro One has left only stumps of once was a prized Hamilton attraction. Now, Speaker, Hydro One is going to clear cut a strip the width of a football field right up the Red Hill Valley. Local residents have protested. The local councillor and I have asked them to consult with residents and to work with the city to find a better way. In March, Hydro One Speaker promised my office that it would organize a community meeting to address residents' concerns, but that never happened. Hydro One doesn't care about consultation, and now it plans to begin clear-cutting in a week and a half. There is no accountability. Hydro One, which is still 70 per cent publicly owned, told our constituents to go to the Ontario Energy Board. The Energy Board says it has no authority. The ministry says Hydro One is no longer a public institution, so call Hydro One's community line. No one, Speaker, is taking responsibility. No one is listening. The Red Hill Valley is an environmentally and culturally sensitive piece of land. In, if Hydro One can clear-cut a trail and spray herbicide at will, then our envi environmental and cultural legislation exists only at the pleasure of big corporate interests. Thank you. For the member, city's member from Sudbury. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Everyone should be able to live and die in peace, with dignity, free of pain, surrounded by loved ones, in a setting of their choice. Mr. Speaker, that's the vision statement of the Maisel Valley Hospice in Sudbury. And I'm very pleased to be able to stand up and speak in this great legislature today, Mr. Speaker, to talk about the great work that Maisel Valley Hospice is doing in Sudbury and throughout northeastern Ontario. But this past weekend, my community came together to celebrate the hospice and also to help the hospice raise some much-needed funds, Mr. Speaker. I'm very proud to say that so far over $150,000 has been raised uh, in the hike for hospice out of my community of Sudbury, and I know there's many other hikes for hospices right across our province and right across our great country. But I also want to acknowledge that RBC has been a big sponsor for us in Sudbury, and they've helped raise over a million dollars for our hospice in the last nine years, Mr. Speaker. And this year we had, uh, again, I've been there since the beginning, 10 years, Mr. Speaker, in Sudbury, and we see more and more people participating every year. This year, over 1,000 participants helped raise money for this year and for that goal. And it was talked about, Mr. Speaker, uh, a quote was brought forward by Mother Teresa. Not all of us can do great things, but we can all do small things with great love. And it was great to see over a thousand people in my riding doing small things with great love for a great organization. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Wellington, Halton Hills. Mr. Speaker, last fall, this House unanimously passed our resolution calling on the government to establish an Ontario Green Legacy Program. This program, based on the County of Wellington's Green Legacy Program, would seek to plant 150 million trees starting in 2017 to mark the 150th anniversary of Ontario within Confederation. 
Last month, I organized and hosted a meeting in my office with senior Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry staff, including Deputy Minister Bill Thornton, as well as Gary Cousins, Mark Van Patter, and Rob Johnson from the County of Wellington. The meeting was productive and gave us the opportunity to discuss our Green Legacy program idea and make the case for a significant expansion of Ontario's tree planting efforts. It has now been more than six months since my resolution was passed, and 2017 is fast approaching. We need the government to make a public commitment to implement our Ontario Green Legacy program proposal. Again, our resolution was passed unanimously by this House, with members from all parties speaking in favour. If private members' business is to be meaningful, the government needs to listen to the will of this House and not ignore it. We know the government is committed to reducing greenhouse gas emissions, and they say they want to combat climate change. Again, I would suggest that an Ontario Green Legacy program could and should be part of this strategy. This is doable. We can harness the volunteer spirit of Ontarians and their noble desire to confront the climate change challenge head on. I once again call upon the government to commit to establishing an Ontario Green Legacy program and immediately begin the work needed to launch this program next year. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. <coughs> Further members' statements. Further members' statements. The member from Trinity Spadina. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, today I would like to uh, recognize the Toronto Raptors as they head into Game 2 of the Eastern Semifinal of the NBA Playoff after winning a tight series against the Indiana Pacers in exciting Game 7 finish. They look to tie the second-round series against D-Way and the Miami Heat tonight at ACC. Mr. Speaker, the Raptors, along with the Jays, the Rock, TFC and Marty's have brought excitement to Toronto sports fans. Excitement that had been missing for a long, long time, the playoffs. You can feel the vibe downtown on a game day. The Raptors have encapsulated the spirit of Toronto and are bringing the people of Toronto and Ontario together under one banner. Each victory brings us closer together. Mr. Speaker, the Raptors, being supported by fans across the province, even one of the Ontario's homegrown talent, Drake, has become a true ambassador for the team and the city, injecting passion and excitement into the community. This is a great sample of how sports can inspire, unite, and build a stronger community. Good luck tonight, Raptors. All of the Toronto and Ontario will be cheering for you. We the North. Yay! Thank you. Further member statements? Yeah. Member from Inglington Lawrence. Come on. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I'm here uh, to speak to Jewish Heritage Month. Uh, May, uh, as proclaimed by a uh, bill passed by the legislature, uh, declares the month of May every year as Jewish Heritage Month. The Jewish uh, community has had a presence in Ontario since the War of 1812 and it is to be found in almost every small town, big town across Ontario, whether it be South Porcupine or Bancroft, Hamilton, Oshawa, Peterborough, they're in every community. They've been there as pioneers, building communities. Uh, they worked in uh, everything from small uh, industry to uh, agriculture uh, to uh, medicine, and they have uh, built the foundation of many of our great institutions here in Ontario. For instance, uh, we have down the street here, we have Mount Sinai Hospital, founded by the Jewish community. In my own writing, I have Baycrest Hospital. Uh, we've got a great uh, legacy of philanthropy, of entrepreneurship, uh, and of uh, great service in the armed forces for all of our great wars. So in this month, I hope in all your communities, especially in Ottawa, I hope you do something to recognize the members of the Jewish community have contributed so much for the last couple of hundred years to make Ontario and Canada a great province and country. Great thank you. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements and 